welcome to our final programme in Question of Sport. And Bill Beaumont has won 11 rounds in both of 11, so the whole series rests on tonight's result. Ian is joined by Tom McKean and Stuart Barnes. Tom is the reigning European 800 metres champion, having also won the European indoor title. A World Cup winner, he's won the European Cup final four times and just over a month ago led from start to finish to become the new indoors 800 metres champion of the world. Uh, Stuart Barnes is the outside half who's just back in the England side. He's been on the winning team in six cup finals, five with Bath and once with Bristol, and helped Bath win the league championship four times. His return to the international scene has been so impressive he's been picked straight away for the Lions Tour of New Zealand this summer. Well, Bill is paired tonight with Neil Fairbrother and Ali McCoist. Neil is the Lancashire captain who's been on the winning side in three knockout finals and the Sunday League Championship team in 89. He's played for England in nearly 20 international matches and it's in the one-day games that he's made the biggest impact. He's averaged over 40 on the recent tour and was also number one for England in the World Cup with an average of 57. Ali McCoist is breaking all sorts of goal-scoring records with the Rangers. 45 times a Scottish international, he helped the club win the double last season and during his spell with Rangers they've won five championships and the Skull Cup seven times. He was winner of the Golden Boot as the top scorer in Europe last season and with 50 goals already he'd be sure to win it again this season but they've cancelled the award. Well I'll buy you a Golden Boot tonight if you get the result for us. <laughs> And tonight, the result of our quiz for you at home. Well, now to the numbers game, and Tom McKean is often a front runner, so he's got the chance again tonight. Anyone from 12, Tom? Um, five. <laughs> no, we didn't want that. We didn't. <laughs> right, well, this is your field, obviously. Oh, why did we get a cricket? Well, you should be okay with uh, Ian on your side, Tom. That's what worries me. Exactly. <laughs> Ali knows. It's so obvious, actually. Rampakesh. Rampakesh. Uh, Mark Rampakesh. Mark yeah. Middlesex. Yeah. No. I haven't seen anything yet. Right, Harvey. Come on. I think that's an Essex badge, and I think it's Nasser Hussain. Nasser Hussain. You think quite right. You've got a bonus of two. <laughs> Actually, uh, Bill calling you Harvey there. You were christened after Neil Harvey, weren't you? Neil Harvey. Yeah, I was. I was. And by some coincidence, I'm also left handed, and everybody around these parts calls me that, so. Okay, you've got your two points. On we go. Ali. Number nine, please, David. John, Jonathan Griffiths. Um, you sure? Yeah. It's Jonathan Griffiths, I think, there. It is, yes. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about him. Very good. <laughs> Scrum, scrum used to play, used to play for Wales, you know, scrum half for Wales. Yeah. And and what's he uh, doing now? He's just a bit of catch a ball now. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's trying to give it away. Yeah, yeah but um, that's two points, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Stuart Barnes, your turn. I think seven, please, Dave. We think that's Elena Meyer. Well, you I do. think right, the South African 10,000 metre runner. Uh, silver medalist in the 92 Olympics. Neil, your turn. Number four, please. <coughs> that's good, what a good shout it is. My man says um, David, Sharp. David Sharp. What a man. Oh, yes. World Cup winner in uh, the 800 metres in Havana last year. Good light, Sharpie. Yeah, and of course you know him because you played soccer in the North East. That's didn't? right. And that was um, the position to come in that race, 57th. <laughs> <laughs> Did that well? It's only 56 running. <laughs> okay, on we go. Ian's turn. Uh, number eight, please. Cochrane. Raymond Cochrane? Yeah. Won the derby? He has done that, yeah. Yeah. And you won a very good two points. <laughs> right, Bill, you complete the round. Uh, number one, please, David. Right. Right. Um, I 
Andy Walker. Pleasure ball. Right. I'll leave it to Ollie. He knows him. Well, I think it's Andy Walker, ex Celtic now Bolton. <coughs> Sucking a yellow lollipop. Scored over 30 goals for Wanderers this season, and you scored again. Well done. <laughs> And of the round, Bill away to a good start. He's got eight points. Uh, <laughs> You're in front. <laughs> End of the round. Uh, Bill's got eight points. Ian has four. Well, now the only round which is not a team game, and Tom McKean is first on the line. Tom, here's the finish of the Barcelona Olympic 800 metres final. And it's those Kenyans again. The first two, please. Close one? Yeah. Um, Tanui and Kaprikic. That's right, yes. William Tanui, perhaps the best organiser of the Kenyans, tactically. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, Kipper Kitch is a better runner, actually, but Tanui seems to get there in the right places at the right time. Not like me. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, he's awkward to run against, Tom, isn't he? Because his arms are flying all over the place. Uh, Kipper Kitch, yeah, yeah. He's, dead, he's very, very gangly and seems to get in the road, but he comes from the back all the time anyway. He's never in it in the first lap and is always there in the last lap. So. Anyway, you're there. Two points. On we go to Ali McCoy. Now, Ali, an 86 World Cup qualifier for you. Scotland defeating Australia 2-0. Who scored the goals, please? The uh, first goal was my teammate David Cooper, Correct. and the second goal was Frank McAvenny. Yeah, making what? Could be difficult, look easy. Yeah, great finish, good finish. Hey, Ali, you've gone mad. I mean, you're on the way to 60 goals. Well, don't you start tempting fate, I hope so. <laughs> be nice to reach that. Be, be nice. Some record, that. Nice. I mean, that really is scoring. Yeah, but to be fair, the, the boys, I mean, it's all down to, I know it sounds, but it's all down to the boys. The boys are playing really well at the moment, and, and Big Mark's creating a lot of chances for me, so things are going well. You must be loving it. Ah, um, Bill, I never said I wasn't. Love it. Can't get enough of it. Um, I'm <laughs> and what about the football then, Ali? <laughs> Shocking audience. And we go to Stuart. Now, Stuart Barnes, take a look at last year's Five Nations match in which Scotland defeated Ireland 18-10. Who are these two putting points on the board for Scotland? I think it's Tony Stanger yep. and Nickel. That's right, Close standing in for Gary Armstrong, yeah. uh, who missed um, the whole of the, the Five Nations, season, didn't he? I think, yeah. Last year, yeah. Actually, it's going to be uh, one of your partners out on the Lions tour, Gary Armstrong. Yeah, I haven't played with Gary, but he's an outstanding player. He's been top player, I think, in the Northern Hemisphere for a number of years now, and uh, he'll look forward to pitting himself against the best in New Zealand. I should think you can hardly keep the smile off your face. You've been uh, an international spectator for a long time. Back you come for England, straight on the Lions tour. I know, it's uh, you know, sad in a way that uh, I wasn't picked for the Lions when I didn't have grey hair. It's going to be a long eight weeks for me, but <laughs> we'll have to keep fit and uh, stay off the beer, I think, Dave. Yeah, it'll be very hard, <laughs> won't it? <laughs> Hang on, look, there's yeah. another one. See it? Yeah. No, another pig flying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. I wouldn't bother going there. <laughs> <laughs> OK, on we go to... Uh, Neil Fairbrother. <laughs> now, for you, Neil, a one-day quarter-final between Warwickshire and Somerset. They say catches win matches, and these two are special. The two men involved, please. First one was Andy Moles. Correct. Um, he opens the back for Warwickshire, and he's a, I think he's a very good player. Grafter gets stuck in, and the second one is a mate of mine who I've been on last couple of tours with, Dermot Reeve. Yeah. Now you mentioned the tour. I didn't. 
Anything to say about it? Not a great deal, no, really. Um, what can you say? We won three games in three months. It was hard work, and it got harder. <laughs> Actually, Ian enjoyed it from a distance, didn't you? Uh, I, I, you imagine the stick him. I took in Australia. Cool, it's true. Thank God the West Indians won their last test in Perth, otherwise it would have been unbearable. Yeah, you sent a couple of faxes, didn't you? There was a fax and a yeah. phone call came our yeah. way, and at yeah. the bottom of it there was a few laughs, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep going. <laughs> but didn't you miss him, Neil, on this tour? Yeah, we had, we had a bit of fun last year. I mean, he came out halfway through for the World Cup to New Zealand, and it was halfway through one of the test matches, and I wasn't playing, and Gucci came up to me and said, look, I want you to look after him for the next week. I don't want him anywhere near anybody that's playing because he won't be fit for the next day. <laughs> so, it's a bit harsh. so I took the mantle for a week and by the end of it, I was absolutely knackered. <laughs> but we won a few golf matches along the way, so we had a good week. <laughs> but Neil, yourself. you haven't finished the story yet. I mean, how was he? Well, he just takes it all in his stride, doesn't he? Carries on. What can you do with him, man? Right, you've got your two points there. Life, life is not a dress rehearsal. <laughs> oh! I'm not here for a long time. He gave you that line. Good time. <laughs> Any more gems? No, nah, saving them. Right. OK, Ian, your turn. The oh, captains dear. are being taken a long way back this week. Oh. In which year did all this rugby union action take place? And who is the Welshman scoring in the corner? Yeah, or at uh, well scoring. Gerald Davis scoring in the corner. Spot on, one point. And the year? Uh, huh? okay. 71. Fantastic. Yes. yes. Right, Bill, you two must name the year and the New Zealand batsman having a go. Listen to us. I'm sure you'll be amazed. Big fun to be had by everyone. It's up to you. Sure they can be done. Cairns was the uh, New Zealand batsman, a very good drinking partner of Ian's. Lance Cairns? So he's, he's deaf and he lip reads. What? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that is definitely a point to Ali that doesn't go on the board, but we've noted it. That one. 1978. You are right. Two out of two. So, still that four point gap. 14 to Bill, 10 to Ian. Next, the mystery men and women trying to confuse, and uh, it's Ian's team first. Who is this shooting star? I think it's uh, Robert Jones. Robert Jones, you have got it quite right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Welsh and Swansea scrum half, so on we go to uh, Bill, Ali, and Neil. For you three, a master craftsman.
he's a good friend of Ollie's, so yeah, I think he'd like to give the answer. I'd recognise those years anywhere. Uh, Gary McAllister, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it is. Of Leeds and Scotland gets you two. <laughs> End of the round, still four between them. 16-12 to Bill. Our home question is worth one point. It's on the team member's own sport. Away is a wild card, but worth two. Tom McKean has the first decision. Home. Name the only athlete to win the men's world championship 800 metres title twice. Billy Kinchella. Billy Kinchella of Kenya. Well, quite right. Cross to Ali. A home, please, David. Who, after winning league championship honours in England last season, moved north to manage a Scottish league club? First division championship medal. Yeah, league championship. Oh, yeah, uh, big John, big John McClellan. John McClellan, that's right. Who's now manager of St Johnson? Correct. Uh, Stuart, I got both the mitres, so I go away, please, David. Oh. <laughs> what is the connection between Christopher Columbus's lookout in 1492 <laughs> and a 56 years old sporting legend winning two classic races in 1992? That's a very good question, this. Well, we think it's Lester Piggott, right? We think it's Lester Piggott. Now we've got to find the connection between the 1492... The lookout. What's the lookout? What's the significance there of the lookout? I've got a feeling we're getting close, aren't we? That's what's annoying me. I wouldn't like to be impulsive, please. <laughs> <laughs> Barnes, he went away. <laughs> Go on, Ali, tell us then. So what? Is that what they were saying? Crow's Nest. Well, they were both sat on the crow's nest. They were both sat on the crow's, on the crow's nest. Ian established it was Lester Pickett was the connection, the 56 yeah. years old sporting legend. Yeah. In fact, he won the English and the Irish Guineas in 1992 on a horse called Rodrigo Di Triano. Which Stuart knows quite well. Look at him now, kicking himself. And in fact... Rodrigo Di Triano was the name of the, of the lookout. lookout on the <laughs> Neil, home or away? I'll try home, please. <laughs> <laughs> Who last season became the first Englishman to bat through an innings in a Lord's Test match? He finished 69 not out. Gooch or Stewart, is it? Yes. Yeah, we'll have a burst at Alex Stewart. He chose the right one. <laughs> now, Ian, you're five points behind at the moment. Home or away? Away. In this sport, it's compulsory for competitors to have details of their date of birth, parents, distinguishing features, and competitor must be dressed in a jacket, and any fighting results in instant disqualification. Name the sport. Greyhound Racing. Gets you your away question. Yes. Right, Bill, home or away? Um, home, please, David. Who scored Ireland's uh, try against Australia in the quarter-final of the 91 World Cup? Hamilton. Gordon Hamilton gets you your safe point. <laughs> Real battle going on there, but still four points the difference. Bill, 19, Ian, 15. <laughs> in round five, where the action stops, the teams have to tell us what happened next. Ian's team first, and for you three it's Rugby Union, a match between the Barbarians and New Zealand at Twickenham. Barbarians on the attack, what happens next? Well, that's only a guess. <laughs> no. I think the referee's got a part to play here. I think they pop it to a forward who crosses the line. The ref is sort of backpedalling, he hits the ref, he goes over, he knocks the ref over, goes over the line with him, lands on the ref, or very near the referee, and the ref can't give a try because he's on his backside. Up. The ref's all tangled up in the mall and, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, I think you've got it together there. Actually, it's Clive Norrin. He gets involved, actually. And there he gets knocked over, as you said. Gets all tangled up in the whole mess. Tries to sort it out. Oh. If he watches uh, hand movements... He's saying the ball wasn't grounded, so... <coughs> Bill, Ali, Neil, soccer for you. A third division match between Northampton and Gillingham. Northampton on the attack. What happens next? Well, he's got to try and edit, hasn't he? So, he's coming up.
enough a defender, so I can't so catch it. So he's gone for the head. Did he head it back out the other? No, I think it's ended up in the net. Well, he just heads it into the back of the net. I don't even have to go for it. I'm going for that. No. Yeah, the ball ends up in the net. In the net. Right, Freddie wrong, so we go across. Well, he, the ball's coming in, he can't catch it, obviously, because it's a back pass. We think he heads it. Heads it. OK, let's see if you're right, because if you are, you go level. Goalkeeper clears the ball. He must be delighted with the defender who hammers it straight back. And he's in trouble. It's Scott Barrett in the goal there. And quite simply, he does the only thing he can do. Heads it out. Piece of quick thinking. In fact, the ball goes out of play. And the scores are suddenly level, 19 points each. <laughs> so to the one minute round now with nine points on offer in 60 seconds. It can make all the difference. Ian, Tom, Stuart, happy? Yeah. Yep. Athletics. The Britain who won the men's uh, 1500 metres silver medal at the World Indoor Championships was? Uh, David Stray. Rugby Union. The British player who scored over 400 international points is? British player, Hastings. Which one? Gavin. Gavin. Yeah. Who is this? Who was that? John Barnes? No, it's Victor, Victor Hugo. Hugo. Horse racing. The winning horse in last month's champion hurdle was? Uh, Granville again. Soccer. Which first division club reached the quarter-finals of this season's FA Cup? Bolton. No. no. Move on. Three sportsmen to name. Mark Minolte. The golfer, yes. Phil Brown. Phil Brown, yeah. And who's the rugby? Who's the rugby? Welsh rugby player. And what was the other question? Mark. First division club reached the quarter-finals. Newcastle. Newcastle. No. Portsmouth. Richard Webster was a Welsh uh, player there. OK, and soccer, which first division club reached the quarter-finals of this season's FA Cup? <coughs> Derby County. Ah. He scored very well there, 7 out of 9, seven which nine sets the target now for uh, Bill, Ali and Neil. Ready to go? Yep. Now, soccer, Celtic's most capped player ever with 64 caps is? Paul McStay. Cricket, against which country did Alan Border pass Gavaska's record total of test runs? New Zealand. Who is this? Ian Wright. Yes. Rugby League, who took just 93 matches to, to reach 1,000 career Jonathan points? Jonathan Davis. Jonathan uh, Davis. Bottica. 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 Golf. The Scotsman who won his first tournament for two years on the European Sam Tour. Yes. Three sportsmen today. Plenty of time. Um. I'm here, Sir Hale. No. Jimmy White. No. Um. Steve Nickel. Nickel. One point. Alan Lamb. Cliff Thorburn. Thorburn. You've got the lot. Nine out of nine. End of the round now, two points the difference. Bill 28, Ian 26. <laughs> well, back we go to the six numbers left on the board, and Tom McKean starts. Number three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Judgy, Robin Smith. We were all stood around there. Half of us wouldn't go with a snake, and half of us would. Mm -hmm. So he was one of the brave ones. Stupid ones. Right, you've got your two points there. Ali. Hey, I'll, I'll go with ten, please, David. Points are level at the moment. Christy O'Connor. Christy O'Connor, Jr. You were fast under that. Yes, mm. that's right. Two points in front. Junior. Stuart. Eleven, please. Katrina <gasps> Witt. Katrina. Katrina Witt. 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 Yeah. Olympic gold medalist in 84 yeah. and 88. And she'll level again. Neil Firebrother. Number 12, please. It's the um, number one tennis player. What's her name? It's Sellers. Yeah. Monica Sellers. You've got your two points. Two pictures left. The captain's left to choose. 32 points to Bill, 30 to Ian. Whoever wins tonight wins the series, and Ian has the first choice. <laughs> and one of your favourite numbers there, eh? number six. <laughs> Number six. <laughs> I think it is. Boardman? Oh, Chris Borden. No, it's not. The Olympic champion. No. He's not a cyclist. Yeah, well, that's almost a clue. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, really, does it? <laughs> well, he can get the... We can tie it. He can tie the match. Laurent Fignon. Cyclist. Cyclist. Fignon. Laurent Fignon. I don't know. Laurent Fignon. Tour de France rider. No, it's not. 
It's Johnny Herbert, oh, Grand Prix right. driver. That's right. You both know yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. And actually, Ian, you may have made a disastrous mistake by going. Mm. I probably have for your mm. six because I think number two would have been far easier, mm. and Bill can clinch the match with this mm. if he Which gets I'm it. Sure he, I'm sure he will. Dean Saunders. No, 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 no. Mm. Dean, we won the series. On the oh. <laughs> Wales and Aston Villa striker, <laughs> and you won the. Uh, 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 So Bill wins the match, 34-30, and the series. Well, now the quiz for you at home. First the answers, then the winners. And Linford Christie has your entry, whether phoned or posted, in one of those mailbags, if you had the following correct answers. The answer to question A was Joe Jury. To question B, it was Manchester. The pictures were of Main Road, the home, of Manchester City. The golfer in each clip in question C was Mark Kalkavecchia. The Formula One motor racing circuit in question D was Canada. The cricketer in each clip in question E was Alex Stewart. And in question F, the mystery guest winding the thread on the loom was Derek Redmond. Okay, Linford. The first out has first choice. Okay, the winner is Mr. A.S. Morgan from Lincoln. And the next is Mr. Mick Rourke from Kent. Thanks, Lynn. We all hope those uh, lucky winners will have a great day. Hope you've enjoyed the series. We've enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be back in the autumn. Have a good summer from the whole Question of Sport team. Bye-bye. Well, if your sport just happens to be snooker, BBC Two in a moment has coverage of the World Professional Snooker Championship. Out of you know, the pollution of the atmosphere, pollution of the food we eat and the water we drink, is, is so great that one assumes that all sorts of selection machinery is already in train. I, I think we're, we're, we're a failed species, and uh, perhaps uh, in the laboratories.